what's changed in the last 10 years is one, we've got uh, companies that are not just from China. You know, way back in 2006, half the list was China. Now, less than a third is China. You've got country, you know, players from India, Russia, Brazil, Chile, Turkey, Philippines, Vietnam, Africa. You've got seven players from Africa, five of them from, from South Africa. And the other thing that's changed is the fact that, you know, these companies are across a large range of sectors. They're not just based on access to natural resources and low commodity prices, or they're not just based on the premise of we can manufacture stuff cheap, which was the premise of the industrial goods companies. They're everywhere. They are in engineered products, they are in telecom, they are in IP, they are in software. Look, you know, I'm like, you know, the most valuable company out there, Alibaba, has got nothing to do with, you know, commodities. It's around innovation and, and, and reinvention and innovation and coming up with the new games. So there is a broadening that has happened across, across many of these industries. And I said, you know, we'll talk about them, but uh, you are on the map. You are 5% of, of the global challenges today. You know, uh, just like we took a punt in 2006, uh, we're taking a punt this year. And, you know, as part of our 10th year anniversary, we actually started profiling to sort of say, look, you know, why is it that these 100 companies are special? Because every year we actually have to struggle by saying, who do we put in the 100 companies? Because the bar that we have in terms of the evaluation criteria often throws up more names than we can take. So we said, you know what, actually maybe we are missing a bigger mega trend out there that it's not just the 100 companies, there are more out there. So we started looking. And when we started looking, we found 1,500 companies. 1,500, 15 times more than the global challenges. You know, the pond of 100 companies is an ocean. And for someone like us who's been following this very systematically, you know, and, and you know, we've got colleagues across the world who work with clients. When we looked at the names, there were surprises. There are companies who are growing in broad daylight, but they are not on anyone's radar. Firstly, they come from everywhere. So it's, it's uh, you know, every country, they come from close to around 60 odd sectors. So if you thought this is only a China or a mining or a, you know, uh, uh, or a Alipay phenomenon, forget it. They're coming from every sector. Uh, you know, they're not that big, but they're actually as big as the global challenges were 10 years ago. They are growing faster than the global challenges were 10 years ago. And they are more profitable than the global challenges were 10 years ago. So the landscape of global competition is about the traditional MNCs and the challengers trying to become leaders. I think it's just gotten a lot more dynamic and competitive because you've now got people who've seen some of the erstwhile challenges become leaders, become role models in a really positive way to sort of say, hey, if they can do it, why can't we? And we are finally unleashing the entrepreneurial energy of the next wave, which really, you know, to me, is, is a tsunami. Uh, these 1,500 companies, actually it's 14, uh, 1493, not 1,500 exactly, but they are collectively <coughs> the third biggest economy in the world. And most of our clients don't know who they are. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. So we are looking at the next era of global competition. And you know, hopefully, some of our global challenges will become leaders. Uh, but I think there is, there is a lot more to watch out for. Uh, if 10 years has been exciting, I think the next 10 are going to be a lot more exciting in terms of who will win and who will win more in the new global landscape.